Drafting with Newmont. Hello, friends. Here I am. It's me, Kenji, with another edition of Drafting with Newmont here on the MTGO Traders channel. We got a specialty draft this time. This is Time Spiral Block Draft. So Time Spiral is going to be the first set. Then you have Planner Chaos. And very last, you have Future Sight. So this is one of those specialty drafts that they put on Magic Online every once in a while. And so, uh, well, we're gonna get some older, weirder, wackier cards. In any case, let's jump right in. And uh, I think this pack has three good cards, um, all of them green. The Dirkwood Tracker, pretty powerful magic card that uh, can stop the opponent from attacking. Dirkwood Bailoth, all of the suspend creatures are quite nice in this format. And then you have like a gem hide sliver. Uh, slivers are a thing, a theme in this. And so I kind of want to try it out. Let's take the gem hide sliver and uh, see if we can go down that route. Also, it's just a good card to have, even if you don't end up in slivers. Next pick here, there is a sliver in the pack, although Sidewinder sliver is not where you want to be. There's a living end, not too good. Uh, Fire Makavu, very good though. When it enters, it deals two damage to target creature. And when it leaves, it deals four damage to target creature. So pretty powerful magic card. It's like a double removal spell. Um, otherwise I would be taking like Prismatic Lens. You can see things like Empty the Warren, so Storm is in this draft format, although it's not very uh, prevalent, but let's take the easy Fire Maw here. And get past, ooh, a Tromp the Domains, yeah! So this is one of those really powerful uh, sorceries that, uh, it's basically an overrun, and it makes you want to play multiple colors, right? Because it's domain, so you want to have all the basic land types. I'm uh, going to go ahead and take it here. It's really good with like the all the Thalids in the format as well. And it's just a nice late game punch. So let's take the Tromp. And get past. Okay, there is a Fire Awake Sliver here. It's a pretty nice one. All Slivers have Haste. And then all Slivers have 1. Sacrifice this permanent target. Sliver gets plus 2, plus 2 until end of turn. Um, premature Burial is a good removal spell. Rebels are kind of a thing in this format, although not as much as in other formats, but you can get some decent Rebels. I think I'm just gonna take the Fire Awake, though. Mm, some other fine cards like Fathom Seer, but you already took the Gem Hide Sliver. Already have another red card already. Why not take the Fire Awake and see if, see if we can make a, a little nice Sliver deck happen. The thing is with the Sliver deck, Gem Hide Sliver is often one of your most important. It would be really awesome if we could get another one. Okay, pick number five does have a few slivers for us here. We do have the Harmonic Sliver, the Vampiric Sliver, uh, Venser Sliver, Bone Splitter Sliver. In fact, this I didn't realize how many slivers were in this pack originally, but it's got quite a few. Um, I don't think Vampiric Sliver is all that great. I actually think the Bone Splitter is probably the best choice here. It's a 4-2 by itself. I know it says 2-2, but it says all slivers get plus 2 plus 0, oh, so it's a 4-mana 4-2 that pumps up my other slivers. Also an Unyaro Bees in the pack, it's always a good one. Pretty heavy green requirement though, but yeah, this is looking good so far. And the nice thing about being green is that you have access to um, a card that you can get in the last pack called Sprout Swarm. And Sprout Swarm, if you've never played in Time Spiral Block Draft, is just one of the most stupid cards that they've printed in any limited format uh, ever. Um, I'll, I'll, t I'll talk more about it when we get to the last pack, should I open one, but uh, for now, just have that in the back of your mind. All right, we have no slivers here. We have some fine red and green card. Well, I don't I say fine, but they're not really fine. Cross and Gips, uh, Grips better than the either Flame Wall. I do like the Celestial Crusader. I think this card's very, very good, but we're not heavy white right now. There's a Mishra in the pack as well. Mm. I think I'm okay taking the Crows and Grip for sideboard purposes. But again, because we have the Tromp, we probably want to play more than two color. Although this is, you know, fine in a two color deck, don't get me wrong. It's just better when you're playing more colors, obviously. Ooh, Shadow Guild Mage is a good um, time spiraled card. Outrider and Core, very, very powerful. If you guys have never played against the Encore creatures from like Tempest Block, you're. Uh, well, maybe you're not missing out, but their ability quite powerful. Oh, we do have a sliver here. Okay, well, we're not playing that one, though. I think we're just taking the Phantom Worm. Six mana, six four. 
And then if damage would be dealt to it, remove a 1-1 counter instead. Let's just take that. Okay, wield a two-headed sliver, which, I mean, they're taking that or the Terramorphic, but uh, have some other good slivers already, so let's take the two-headed. I normally try to avoid slivers in this format just because I don't think it's normally all that great, but we have a pretty good start here, no doubt. As we pick up a Wormwood Dryad. This is just filler, basically, and then we can sideboard it in versus opposing green decks. 3-1 unblockable, if the opponent has a forest, effectively. Yeah, that's kind of a creepy-looking art. Okay, we did wheel a Sidewinder Sliver, but we don't really want it playing that, I don't think. I'm going to take it, but unlikely that we want it. 5-6 um, Flash Trample for 7 versus a Dodecapod. Dodecapod, I should say. Yeah, I mean, this is just a format of 3-3 three, three most of the time, but yeah, if your opponent has a way to make you discard, ooh, you can get them good. I think we'll take that over the Worm. I think there might be a second worm that's wheeling anyways. I think this was from Apocalypse Block, if I remember correctly. Nowhere as good as the Flame Tongue Kavu, of course, but hey. It does the job. Okay, last few picks here. Fathom Seer probably shouldn't be wheeling, but not for us. We're going to take the Chromatic Star. Uh, fine, just put in your deck to make your deck effectively smaller so that you can draw into your more important cards later on. Or it's also nice to be able to splash. There's a Harmonic Sliver for us on the wheel. Not bad. Might not be playing in the main deck, but nice having access to it. Okay, Phrygian, Interceptor, just random cards here. Cards we're definitely not going to be playing. And so, let's see, moving into the second pack. Hopefully we can open some nice ones. Wouldn't mind picking up some, uh, some, uh, what do you call them? Thalid production as well. All right, our rare is Boom Bust. Destroy target land you control and target land you don't control, and then you can destroy all lands. Don't think that's what we're looking at here. Pretty powerful pack overall. There's a Necrotic Sliver here, which would be a fun one to play, but that stretches the mana base a little bit far. Uh, Battering Sliver's fine. Melancholy's good. Sunlance is good. Mirebo is good. I think I tried to just stay two colors. Um, and probably just take the Meyer Boa here, honestly. Maybe if the Necrotic wheels, I can consider taking it, but I don't really want to jump into uh, all that many colors. Okay, our rare here is Miri the Cursed, a pretty good one. Flying first strike haste for four mana. And then whenever it deals damage to a creature, you get to put up on one counter on it. Jota's Vendor is pretty good as well. I think here we're just taking the uh, Vitaspore Thalid, though. Mm. Yep, we're just going to stick to the red-green. There are better cards in that pack than the Vitaspore Thalid, but... I think I like the uh, route we're going down here. Oh, I should note that if you enchant Phantom Worm up with... Uh, uh, plus X, plus X abilities, so you put like a... Uh, there's Petrified Plating in this format. It's plus two, plus two for a creature enchantment. If you put that on a card like Phantom Worm, then it cannot die to damage anymore. Ooh! One of the best cards in the format in this pack. Pyrohemia. This is the Red Pestilence. And, uh, yeah, we are just going to slam that. Another really good card in this pack, Prodigal Pyromancer. As well as like a Saltfield Recluse. Wow, wow, wow. This pack is amazing, but we opened one of the bombiest cards in the format, so... Or rather, we got past one of the bombiest cards in the format, so let's just take it. 
it is slightly awkward with my smaller creatures, of course, especially the ones with all these one toughness, but it does not take much work to make the Pyrohemia absurd. It's just way too good. We're going to need to find some fat now. Pyrohemia Phantom Worm is not exactly a combo. Although, like I was mentioning earlier, if we get that enchantment to put on the Phantom Worm, then we can just Pyrohemia without worry. It's actually a nice combo. Okay, next pack here. What do we get? There's a Wrathai Trapper. Enslave is easily the best card in this pack. Holy moly. Enslave is absurd. It doesn't deal damage to you after you steal the creature. It deals damage to the person you're stealing from. So remember that. I think Periphery Nodes or Porphyry Nodes is also pretty good. Yeah, Porphyry Nodes is, is a silly one for sure. Uh, Blight Speaker for a more Rebel theme. What does Time Crafting do? No, it's not very good. We get like a Keldon Marauders here. Yeah, not a great pack here for us. I could consider taking something of a different color. The double black's a little bit awkward though. Kind of want to take the nodes, but I guess we'll just take the Keldon Marauder. And eh, maybe a Utopia Vow here, or actually an Evolution Charm is, is quite nice. Ooh, a Shaper Parasite, also one of the better um, morph cards in the format. In fact, it might actually be correct to take the Shaper Parasite because you could still play it as a morph card um, and if you don't draw the blue, sure, then it's a 3-mana 2-2, two, two. but if you do draw the blue, it's a really nice removal spell. I think that might be my pick. Another Melancholy in this pack. Yeah, man, I mean, maybe I should have been black. Seeing a lot of good black cards go around. Ugh, gross. Nothing for me here, I'm just going to take the Melancholy. The thing is, fixing is kind of hard to come by in this set, or in this format, in this block, I should say. Um, and so, while going like three, four, five color is possible, it's not always going to be the easiest thing to do. <clears throat> but having access to cards that are morph and just very good is nice, right? Right now we have the Gem Hide Sliver, the Chromatic Star. Pyrohemia wants a lot of mountains, though. Maybe I should be taking those Utopia Vows. They're more removal than anything. The, the Utopia Vows are the enchantments that I've been passing that are a green and one to cast. They're an enchanted creature. Um, makes the creature can't, uh, unable to attack or block. But then um, they can also tap for one man of any color. This is a pretty nice pack as well. What the heck's going on? I mean, I think I Rift Mark Knight is generally pretty good. Blood Knight solid. Another Meyer Bow in the pack. Simeon Spirit Guide if we really wanted to. Huh. I wonder if I should just be taking the Blood Knight here. Or maybe the Battering Sliver to continue down the uh, Sliver theme. Although we don't really have that many Slivers, though. Yeah, I'm just going to take the Blood Knight. I think there's a Battering Sliver that might wheel anyways. Mm, this looks like a Skirk Shaman here for us. Not a bad card. Can't be blocked except by Artifact Creatures and Red Creatures, so... Oftentimes it can just be unblockable versus the opponent. I think this deck's okay thus far, but it's not amazing. Wow, Melancholy and Sunlance Wheeling is probably not right. Do I want to take Sunlance? I already have a Melancholy in the sideboard, but I don't think we're playing the black. I think I'm just going to take the Battering Sliver. We already have a Sliver sub-theme. It's a big creature for uh, Pyrohemia to, you know, burn into. I wouldn't be surprised if pack 3 just gives us a lot of removal spells. In the previous drafts I've done of this format, people pass cards like... Uh, um, 
Fatal Attraction, Flowstone Ridge, or Flowstone uh, Bracers or something. I mean, th there's a ton of red cards in the last pack that people pass around frequently, and they're just good removal, so we'll see if we can get those as uh, get a Needle Peak Spider here. And yeah, we might play that card. It's not great or anything, but it's not terrible. Um, sideboard, Seal of Primordium, I suppose. It's a very late blight, blight speaker too. Yeah, I feel like I missed the boat on drafting black here. But, I mean, I picked the first pick, Gemhide Sliver, and I kind of wanted to build a Sliver deck. So, maybe that's on me anyways. Hey, there's that Utopia uh, Vow I was talking about. It's a fine one. Again, it's, it's removal spell, if nothing else. All right, last few picks of the second pack. And now we move to Future Sight, where <laughs> open a bridge from below and a foil glittering wish. Not cards we're going to take. We do have, let's see, a Ghost Fire, which is good. Kabu Primark, which is okay. And then um, Virulent Sliver, as well as a uh, Llanowar Empath. The virulent sliver stack, so it's it's not impossible to end up getting like three or four virulent slivers in a draft, and then uh, you know if you just randomly have like two slivers, two virulent sliv slivers on the battlefield, uh, you can quickly poison out your opponent. But this is a pretty easy ghost flyer, and then we should probably wield the sliver. Such a weird card. Ooh, Oris Samite Guardian is. Also an insane card. <laughs> Prevent all damage that we've dealt to target creature this turn just to tap her. Yikes. Pretty broken. Uh, we have a petrified, uh, petrified Plating. That was that enchantment I was talking about to go along with the Phantom Worm. But here we have a Fatal Attraction, which is that removal spell, and then a Homing Sliver. Each Sliver card in each player's hand has Sliver Cycling 3. Kind of neat. I think we probably take the removal spell and then uh, plan on wheeling the Homing Sliver. But best card in this pack by far is Oris. What does this do? Whenever you cast a spell, creatures you control again, the tar No, it's not very good. Charumbler. Minus one, three. Double strike, and then you can fire breathe it. Kind of funny. Soul Tether Golem. Three, three for two. Whenever another creature in the battle, put time. No. One, one flanking. Bloodthirst for two. Meh. This looks to just be an edge of autumn here for us. This can also help us find um, our blue for the Shaper Parasite. And uh, just a good card overall, because you can cycle it later on if you don't have anything to do with it. Uh, best card in this pack, though, is the Icker Slick. Cycling and then Madness is a, is a real nice combo. So if you have six mana and one of them's black, you get to cycle the card and get the ability anyways, which is obviously disgusting. Okay... We have Sporloth Ancient, Skizik Surger, which is a 6-4 haste for 6. Uh, petrified Plating again. Let's just take the Fatty. Let's take the Sporloth Ancient, passing a 4-C. Ah, Flowstone Embrace. That was, the, that was the card name I was thinking of. So this is an enchantment that it looks a little bit awkward at first, but you tap the enchantment. So it's basically a 2-mana shock. Nessian Courser, but let's take the removal spell. And yeah, I mean, this deck's fine. Nothing amazing, nothing exciting. But we have some individually powerful cards, and overall, the deck doesn't look awful. I think right now, Utopia Vow is probably a cut. I'm not huge on the Spider. And I mean, the Slivers are pretty medium. But what am I going to do at this point? 3 mana 6, 6, vanishing 2. If you kick it for 4 more, so 7 mana, it would enter with 3 additional time counters. So you can attack like once with this. Um, Infiltrator Ilkor probably shouldn't be going this late in the draft. It's one of the craziest 2 drop suspend cards, but we'll just take another removal spell. Ooh. 
Ooh, Bloodshot Trainee is actually kind of interesting with the double flowstone embrace, but it's too cute, too cute for my blood. Um, Kelvin Megaliths is pretty good too. Very slow, but pretty good. Uh, I think I'm just going to take another Sporloth Ancient, though. Again, I just want to take some fatties for our Pyrohemia, and the Sporloth Ancients are nice for the Trompta Domains as well. Right, we can start uh, start building a mass army into a Tromp. Seems good. So, let's see here. At this point, I'm running like nine mountains, seven forests, and one island, I think. Again, the extra benefit of the island, pumping up the Tromp domains. <sighs> Not thrilled, but we have a lot of removal now. Two fl oh, I didn't even realize the Keldon Rodders. That actually probably needs to get the cut. Actually, probably, he says. So, basically any red or green creature that we can find to replace that we will. Right now, Needle Peak, Spider, probably the play of the Marauders if we end up doing that, but uh, we should find something else. Creatures with no abilities get plus two, plus two. <laughs> this affects your opponent too, so not necessarily a good card. Uh, Lanowar Augur is bad. Although it does survive Pyrohemia, I suppose. All right, we, we have some playables. So we got a Primark here, and we got the Virulent Sliver. I'm not going to take the Virulent. That was, I think, the only one that we saw, and Primark is better positioned in our deck. It does have Convoke, too, so it's not like crazy hard to get to eight mana with Convoke. Okay, that is 23. And I don't think there was anything too exciting that we could wheel here. Oh, I guess Homing Sliver was not terrible. Would we run that? My Sliver plan just didn't really come together. Like, Gem Hide Sliver, amazing. Two-Headed Sliver, meh. Firewake Sliver, meh. Bone Splitter Sliver, fine as a 4-2. Battering Sliver, meh. Oh god, what have I done? In fact, it's possible I want to cut these three cards, right? Because this is, yeah, I think I might be cutting some of these cards. Petrified Plating, wow, super late 4C and a pretty late Whip Spine Drake. I wonder if I should splash for 4C too, because that card's great. Ugh, that's gross. I think I'm going to. Ah, Courser, great. <laughs> we can replace some of these stinky slivers that I have now instead. Just run like Needle Peak Sliver or Spider or something. Or the Fomori Nomad. Vanilla 4 4 for 5. <laughs> All right, where are we at? Removal, we have Pyrohemia, Ghostfire, Fatal Attraction, Double Flowstone Embrace, so that's good. Creature quality, that's where we're not so good. I think I, we're actually running 881 in favor of, oh, 881, so no favors here. We don't need three islands. Because remember, Shaper Parasite, we don't need to transform, so it doesn't need blue. Force is the only true card, but then we have Edge of Autumn, we have Gem Hide Sliver, we have Chromatic Star. Like, I could, I could probably get away with two islands and seven forests, I suppose, but I just feel safer um, going 8-1 eight, eight, here. All right, well, not a crazy good deck, but uh, I think we're going to have to make this work. So let's uh, submit this and go to the first round. Stay tuned. Here's round one of our Time Spiral block draft, where we've drafted some uh, red, green, well, and you can see some blue card <laughs> deck. 
Uh, this is a pretty easy keep though. Turn two Myoboa, turn three Shaper, Parasite on the flip. <laughs> Uh-oh, I'm in trouble. Ah, you'll be fine. Unless I draw a blue source, then you will not be fine. <laughs> we'll see. You never know with these. Opponent could just have a Sprout Swarm and end up killing me. That's all it would take. Planes, all right. And suspend Shade of Trocare. Not a bad card, by any means. Glowstone Embrace. Good draw. I can take care of the Shade. Like I was saying during the drafting portion, there are a decent number of suspend cards in this format. And uh, Shade of Trocare. Not a bad one for the... Um, what looks to be maybe Mono White deck. I think here I like just playing out the Shaper face down instead of uh, using the Embrace on the Errant Doomsayers. I think we probably want to save the Embrace for the Shade of Trocare. You will see though. This card is slightly annoying of course, but... Ooh, a salt field recluse. All right. Well, the opponent's deck is looking pretty darn good, actually. From what I've seen so far, they've got uh, quite the deck. So let's go to combat here. They're going to tap probably my morph. Actually, no, my Meyer bow makes more sense. I lied. Because I could potentially flip the morph in response. So well, I guess they are going to do it to the Meyer Boa. All right. Let's play the gem hide sliver here. And I think I like using the embrace actually on the doomsayer so that they can't tap my sliver on upkeep. And let's just kill it now. Such a weird enchantment. You enchant the creature and then you tap the enchantment to give it plus two, minus two. But that's a future sight block for you. Hopefully we get the turn back without them killing our gem hide sliver. Because right now gem hide sliver is insane. I think if anything they'd end up killing the morph, but you never know. Also, if you're watching this draft and you've never played Time Spiral Block before, just know that Saltfield Recluse is A+. Makes combat hell for the opponent. All right, and if you didn't know, any creature that comes off of suspend has haste, so that's why they're able to attack with it here. And they hit me for two. Looks like they're gonna play something for three mana. That is a Cloud Chaser Kestrel, okay. And uh, now we have some options. So they have the Salt Field Recluse, so it makes it a little bit harder to attack. I think we're probably just going to jam the Fire Maw Kavu here. And then... I think I like shooting the Recluse first. And do I want to trade for their 2-2 flyer? I think we're going to pass now. I have an option now next turn of either uh, paying the echo or not paying the echo. If I don't pay echo, then uh, we can just kill one of their creatures. And we can cast some of our blue cards, so I think we're probably going to end up doing that. Pretty nice two for one here. Oh, white main lion. Okay. Um, so in response to that, I can flip up the Shaper Parasite and give their Kestrel minus two, minus two. 
or rather plus two minus two. Oh, they have two white main lions. <laughs> All right, that's pretty good. Oh, you got me. The bouncy cats. <laughs> well, did not expect that. Ooh, good draw. So, can I attack with both here? And I don't think they're double blocking my parasite. I think they want to keep their shade. And then we can just uh, fatal attraction there. Shade of Troke here while they're tapped out. Deals two damage when uh, it enters. And then on my upkeep, it would deal four damage if the creature is still alive. But since we know they have the Kestrel, we would just want to use it to immediately kill a creature if possible. Okay, there's the Kestrel again, but no other plays. So let's, I guess, tap like this so that I can hold up double regeneration. Get a little 4C action going, and we're going to bottom the forest, bottom the forest, bottom the 4-2, but we're absolutely keeping the Pyrohemia. Play a land, and we will attack for 2. And I could just play out the Primal, or Kavu Primarch as a 3-3 three, three right now. Uh, it costs 8 to do the full mode, though, and I do have that, so... Seems like making a 7-7 seven, seven could be good. Although, th that being said, I can absolutely see it being wrong not playing out the Primarch, considering I have Pyrohemia in my hand. Okay, they're going to attack for two. They still have one white main lion in their hand. I'm pretty close to just killing them. But, uh... Let's... Go like this. Hold up double regeneration for the Meyer Boa. And now with the Kavu Primark, we can win the game next turn. Because uh, we can Pyrohemia, and then Pyrohemia for three. And then uh, win the game. Let's see, one, two, three, four. Cast it once, cast it twice. I guess they have the white main line in their hand still. We'll see. At any rate, I think our opponent's in a really bad position. Convoking out a big creature <laughs> makes me think of Guilds of Ravnica. Man, this gem hide sliver has done so much work. Unlocking our shape or parasite, unlocking 4C, allowing us to... Uh, Play Fire Maul Kavu that one turn. So I think if I draw another red source, I win. I don't think that quite wins, though. Yeah, I don't think that quite wins. All right, red, red, 1-1, one, one. Pyrohemia. They might just scoop, though. Honestly, I don't need to do it for more than two. If they play their white main lion here, then they lose. 
No, they need to wait. This doesn't work. Because if they play their white main lion now, I can Pyrohemir twice, wipe the board, and then kill him with Kavu. Oh, they messed up. So now I can just go like this. Clear the board, except for a 7-7. Seven, seven. And that is all she wrote. And now you see the power of Pyrohemia. Pestilence. Color shifted. So opponent had a bunch of white cards. They had some good ones. Ah, oh, that was their morph. The Whip, Spine, Drake. Hmm. They were playing wrong colors for Wormwood Dryad. Yeah, I don't think we're doing much sideboarding here. So let's submit it and get him for game two. Game two here of the first round on the draw. Turn two Mayaboa into a turn three Fatal Attraction seems fine. Uh, they have the dang Shade of Trocare again. Ooh, but a Ghost Fire can quietly deal with that. Man, having any one of those Suspend creatures on turn one is so good. Uh-oh, our hand is uh, quite expensive now. <laughs> yeah, we can cast both these three drop removal spells, but we also have two five drops and a six drop in our hand. Oh no! Our Maya, Meyer Boa. Meyer Boa. Ate a dead and gone. Ooh, opponent only on one white source right now, though, so Shade of Trocare not looking too good. What do we have here? Outrider and Core, okay. Well, found our island, that's pretty good. I think we're just going to pass here. And actually, I should have. This was a mistake. I should have ghost fired their creature or either even fatal attraction did on my turn. Oh god, this is so bad. I know they have two white main lions in their deck too. What am I doing? This is like noob level play. Thank god they didn't have one though. <laughs> uh, don't do that. Don't play like I did. Do as I say, not as I do. Because that was really bad. All right, they, they only have one planes. So I'm not gonna bother using Fatal Attraction right now. Let's just play the Bone Splitter. Okay, they hit their second white source. Yeah, I really need to make sure I, I cast my removal um, when they don't have two mana open. That, that could have been really bad. Ooh, a Calciderm. That's a pretty good one, too. Hmm. Well, Calciderm is going to be a huge problem. I guess let's just run out the Needle Peak Spider and pass. That is not ideal. And you know what? If they have a white main lion, they get to bounce their Calciderm too. Oof. I actually think it might be correct for me to double block the Calciderm. Especially given my hand. Hmm. There are so many things that could go wrong, obviously, but... That might be the right play. <sighs> I could try to race, but... Mm, decisions, decisions. Let me actually look up White Main Lion real quick. Is it it's not target, right? It just says do. Yeah, okay, so gets around Shroud. Oh, I'll take a hit. Let's get one more piece of information. 
Rather, let's draw one card and see what it hits before double blocking. Lucent limited, okay. Now we can fatal attraction that. Two damage to it just to kill it ASAP. And then I guess just pass. Spider can block the Lucent, but I'm still not thrilled with the position I'm in. <sighs> what a beating. That's pretty good for me if they're not attacking with the Lucent. Because I think at this point I'm supposed to double block the Calciderm. Yep, let's do it. I think it's just too terrible for me to not block. Given that they have uh, two white main lions that we know about. Alright, well, we'll take our two for one. Or, I guess two for one in their favor, but you know what they, you know what I mean. Okay, they played the Rift Mark Knight. Hmm. I think I'm still just supposed to run out the uh, Kavu here, even though I don't get to kill a creature with it. Actually, that's not true. I'm gonna be using this to kill the Lucent Limited anyway, so let's target itself and deal four damage to the Limited. That seems good. That seems correct. He's no fly, right? Yeah, okay. So, we just need to hit a forest and I think we're okay. As they play an errant doomsayers out. Come on, forest. It's kind of a for- no, that's not. I have- so it's a cycle. Edge of Autumn only gets stuff if you have four or fewer lands, I think. Yeah. Ooh, but we did hit the forest. Right on time. Now we get to go Ancient into Ancient and start pooping out uh, two Sapperlings every other turn. As they flash in a Celestial Crusader. Nice. Okay. So this person might have been in my draft because they, they have a lot of the cards that I saw. Right? The Crusader, the Rift Marked. And actually, I'm going to be taking a lot of damage from the Rift Mark Knights next turn. Because they're going to be 3-3s three because of the Crusader. So I need to find a removal spell this turn to kill the Crusader. Otherwise we are in a world of hurt. That ain't going to do it. Yikes. Yikes, yikes, yikes. Can I have my uh, Fire Makabu back, please? Because remember, with these knights have flanking, so <sighs> if if oh right, this one's a black one. All right, so this one doesn't actually get pumped up by the crusader, so that's a little bit of a saving grace for me. I might only take five damage here instead of eight. We really need to find a removal spell for that crusader, though. And they have a dragon whelp. Oy, oy, oy. Wow. So I'm taking, I take two, four, five, six, seven. Yikes. What happened here? I thought I was in okay shape, and then all of a sudden, boom. Oh, they're going balls to the wall. I like it. So they're going to try to kill me on the next turn then. So let's block here, take three, four, five, six, seven, go to five, and then I need to draw a removal spell. Not quite good enough. They can deal five damage to me in the air. Damn. 
Nasty. Good draw, but not quite good enough. Yeah, okay. Well, opponents thought, said they thought their deck was medium, but I think their deck looks very good. I might have to bring in the Vow versus them, honestly. We really just need to draw our uh, <laughs> Pyrohemia. That's gonna be that's gonna be key. Let's bring in the Utopia Vow, take out the little Shaman, and go to game three. Okay, game three of the first round. Opponent crushed us with a bunch of flyers there. Uh, is this hand a keep? I think it is, but obviously it needs some help. Um, need to find a red source, first of all, and need to draw a few more lands after that even, but I think this is one of those hands that you can't mulligan. You just have to keep it and uh, keep it and hope to get there. Uh, yeah, yeah, another six drop was a terrible draw. All right, come on, mountain next turn. Give me the mountain. That is not a mountain. In fact, that's not a land at all. If I had been able to play the Mireboa, hit a land here, and then play the uh, Primarch, I think we would have been in excellent shape, but mountain or bust, basically. Mountain this turn. Oh, oh God. And now we're probably dead because Oris is broken. Opponent was definitely in our draft pod. And we're missing lands. Ah, uh, poop. Okay, well, four draws, no land now, so that's just a little bit unlucky, I think. Guess we'll discard the double red card, even though it has protection from white. I'm just so far away from casting it. Yep. Yeah. All right, I'll just scoop this one up. We needed to have drawn our third land, and we didn't, and then... Now Oris is just going to take over the game because I can't even kill it, so... Boo! That's no fun. We will have to go to round two. Here's round two of this Time Spiral block draft. We'll play first. And we have lands! Man. Four draw steps, no land in the previous round was a sad face. Because all we needed was one mountain and then Ghostfire was live. We ghost fire the Oris, we get to curve out, things would have been very, very good. In fact, yeah, we had what? It was turn two Mariboa, it would have been turn three Kabu Primark, turn four kill your Oris, bash you for five. Oh, would have been insane. Oh well. Let's just win this round and uh, try to pull off a 2 1 total. Flashes in a Scrib Ranger end of turn. And plays out a 1 4 blocker. I like it. I will play a 4 2 reach card. How about that? Taste it. Hunting Wilds. Alright, so they go get two lands, two forests. It's kind of silly. So I cannot kick the Primark yet. Um, but we can attack with the Spider, and I don't think they're going to double block. And then play Gem Hide and Pass. We have a lot of mana, though. I wonder if they're going to make that a 1-6 wall. <laughs> okay, that's pretty good. Take one flying. I'm going to save the ghost fire. We don't need to fire it off yet. And let's play a big old Primark. Pongify? Oh no, they turned it into a... They turned it into an ape. It's not what I wanted to see. We still have good attacks, though. 
They do have good fat blockers here, but none of their defenders really do too much versus my mass of uh, high power creatures. I mean, they could like double block the, I guess they could double block the spider, which would be annoying. In fact, yeah, I guess I don't have any good attacks. I lied. Because I'd end up trading the spider for the wood readers, and that's not a good trade. Reality Acid. All right, that's a good one. Slow, but powerful. Vanishing three, and then when this leaves the battlefield, uh, I sacrifice it. So if they have a way to like bounce Reality Acid, it's also a little bit crazier. Might have to just kill the uh, Psychotrope Thalid. Another Primal Plasma. This one they might make a 2-2. I don't think they'd want to make another 1-6, but we'll see. Yeah. I'm going to make it a 2-2 flyer. Um, we'll wait and see what we draw before we decide to Ghost Fire. And yeah. Go ahead and just fire it off on the... Uh, Psychotrope Thalid. Then play a little Mire Boa. Next turn would be a pretty good turn to find Tromp the Domains. Give all my creatures plus three, plus three, and trample. The turn before the spider dies to the Reality Acid. That is not a Tromp. We're still playing out all of our lands, though, since we have like 4C in the deck. We're able to cast potentially multiple spells a turn. Okay, Land of War Empath, a good one from them. They get to scry two and then uh, reveal the top card of their library and draw it if it's a creature. Hmm. They actually kept the spell burst on top, so I'm going to need to draw an irrelevant spell here this turn, otherwise I'm pretty dead. Oh boy. And that's probably just game, honestly. Like, now they draw Spell Burst and they can just ca or counter whatever. ay 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 <laughs> With buyback. Not to mention I'm dead in three turns in the air. Alright, let's go to a game two. We drew 12 lands and uh, six spells. Not ideal. Not ideal. Ah... <sighs> Looks like Wormwood Dryad might be useful here. I guess I can take out the Vitaspore versus them. Let's try to draw a good amount, a good ratio of lands to spells. That last game we flooded out, the previous game we got screwed. <laughs> uh, okay, play first. I can keep this. We have Chromatic Star in hand. We only need to draw one land for the Shaper Parasite, which is nice. Oops, I actually forgot to play the Chromatic Star. Wasn't thinking. Good thing it doesn't uh, matter, since we didn't do or draw anything to do turn two anyways. Edge of Autumn. All right, they get to ramp. And we drew the perfect lands. Forest, or sorry, Mountain Mountain off the top, so we get to play a 2-2 unblockable here. And we know that's going to be good versus them. Let's so play a Land of War Empath, sure. Into a Penumbra Spider, yeah, that's a good one. Let's morph down our Shaper Parasite, attack for two unblockable. Oh man, I'm gonna be real sad if we start off 0-2 with this deck. This deck was good. All right, what do you got, opponent? Looks like they're just going to play out the spider. Spider does some good work. One of the more annoying cards for sure. Um, but yeah, 
2 to unblockable. Just going to do some work here. Then we get to play out our Sporloth Ancient, which is so much fatter than anything else on the battlefield right now. And over time, we get to start uh, pooping out some extra 1-1s. Temporal Eddy, sure. But not attacking with the Empath for some reason. I think that was probably just a misclick on their part, but I'm not attacking with my Morph here. So they're not getting punished. Oh, I think they meant to attack, they just forgot. Click too fast, apparently. Scrib Ranger, sure. That card has protection from blue, so can't parasite it. Into Hunting Wilds, go thin out their library, right. So if you missed it, the opponent bounced a land to their hand since they didn't have a land drop there. And they were able to play it untapped. And then, uh, Finish it off that way. Uh, so I'm going to go like this, I think. I'm going to add a blue here, draw a card, flip the shaper, kill the empath, embrace the scrib ranger, kill the ranger, and then uh, attack in for six. Okay, looks like they're going to go ahead and chump there. Just guarantee they get value off the spider, I guess. Didn't expect them to chump, which is why I didn't block, or rather attack with the Shaper Parasite, but I mean, I guess I'm okay with that. Primal Plasma, okay. There's their 1-6 again. <laughs> Into another Psychotrope Thalid, sure. Uh, so, ooh, it's going to be spicy. We're going to Flowstone the Thalid to kill it. Attack with these two again. And then Attraction to kill off the Primal. We're looking in really good shape here. Reality Strobe. Return target permanent to its owner's hand. Exile it with three suspend counters. Okay, that's kind of annoying. Hey, there's the island for Trump. Does that kill them? Plus three, plus three, plus three, plus three, plus three, plus three. So it'd be two, three, six, nine. I put them to one. Not quite. All right, so we'll kill them next turn. Although, granted, I might not even want to show them the Tromp. But I guess there's no harm in just jamming it, making sure we win. I wonder why they didn't kick that. That is a little concerning. Hmm. I guess they could have a counter here. Alright, since they didn't pay, I'm going to go ahead and Tromp and just go for it. They could be holding up that uh, spell burst card or whatever it's called. I'm not sure what could blow me out there, but I'm sure there's <laughs> something. All right, they scooped it up. I'm gonna go to a game three. And we're going to sideboard nothing. We're going to run it back. I think our deck's good. No, our deck is great because we're great and we are going to win the next game. Not with this hand. Opponent mulliganed. We're going to mulligan. Ooh. This is actually really tempting with a scry on the draw because one forest unlocks gem hide. I'm risking it for the biscuit. I'm already 0-1 anyways. Bottom of the ghost fire. We got two draw steps at a forest. Let's go. 
One draw step. Come on, forest. Not for you, for me. Boom. Oh no. Double green six drop. Come on, just give me a forest next turn. Oh yeah, we did it. Let's play the courser. Let's just go aggro on them. Let's play like courser into wormwood dryad. <laughs> they played a 1-4. All right, new game plan. Play the gem hide sliver. Play 4C next turn. Don't touch my sliver. Don't you dare touch the sliver. All right, good. I don't care about Penumbra Spider. We got, we got blue to add here. Um... So, I think I'm going to blot him the Embrace for sure. We know the Shaman is very good versus them, though. So, I think we bottom one Mountain, keep one Mountain, and keep the, keep the Skirk, and then pass. We just want to guarantee at least one land, but we'd rather f draw a Forest. Okay, Primal Plasma. Let's see if they make it a 2-2 flyer. They do. That's fine. They could attack for one if they really wanted to. I don't know if that'd be good for them, but obviously a potential thing to do. All right, so let's go aggressive here. We're going to play the Skirk Shaman. We're going to play the Wormwood Dryad. And now I have five unblockable damage next turn. Uh, every turn, if I just want to invest one mana into giving the Wormwood Forest Walk. Man, I talked about during the drafting portion how good it is to have a turn two gem hide sliver, and you guys are seeing it here. All right, let's go to combat. Attack with both. Give a little forest walk action. Get them for five. And then we can go Sporoloth. As they flash in a Scrib Ranger. Okay. So they can actually uh, produce five mana this turn now. No double blue yet, but remember, they can bounce a forest to their hand, untap a creature, and if they don't have a land drop, then they get to do that. What do they do? They pongified my 4-4 again. Okay. I mean, we just have them on a three-turn clock. Question is, would I like to, uh... oh, they're not attacking with the 2-2 now. Interesting. Would I like to Fatal Attraction one of their flyers or just keep going? It's a lot of green sources of mana for them. And I think we just keep going with the good old unblockable creatures. I think it's a little too greedy to just run out the Primarch there. Tapping all my creatures seems unnecessary. I like that Ape Token. Ape Token is nice. All right, looks like they scooped it up. So we are going to take that second round here. Really wish we had won, won this first round as well. I think our deck was, uh, I mean, oh, rather their deck was very good even though they said they didn't think it was all that great, but all we needed was that one mountain. But we didn't draw land in four draw steps. So we go to a game three, or rather a round three. Hope to pull off the two and one with a pretty good deck. We won the die roll, great. Let's play first. And our hand is fine, a little bit heavier on the red sources, but Given that we have a Pyrohemia in the deck, that's not a terrible thing. Turn two Boa, turn three Ghost, turn four Sliver. Opponent, opponent with the turn one Essence Warden. Nice. 
Well, we'll see how much life that gains them over the course of the game. As they suspend a Riftwing Cloudskate. Ugh. We'll take your one. Wing's pretty annoying. It ain't no river boa, which would have been great since we've been playing against a lot of blue decks. Okay. So let's attack with both. I can't imagine them blocking, but if they do, great. And I guess we're just going to keep curving out. I don't see a reason to use the Ghost Fire quite yet. I mean, I could have played it on the Morph, but odds are it's not a Shaper Parasite. There are so many Morph creatures in this format. So I'm not too concerned. Let's go to combat again. I think I don't want to offer the trade though. I think I just want to offer this attack. See what the opponent does. Okay. Obviously I'm fine, I'm just paying a green here. Since I can't cast the Phantom Worm out here and I wasn't planning on playing the Primarch uh, this turn anyways. Ah, oh, it is a Shaper Parasite. Well, well, well. I guess you got me there. You got me good. Let's see what they end up bouncing. Probably just the Courser. So they're missing land drops. Tapping two, playing a Vitaspore Thalid, that's fine. And let's just kill the flyer here. Attack for two. Ooh, I like the block, cheeky. Unfortunately for them, I did draw another green source, so get to still play out our Courser. Ah, Thornwield Archer. That's a pretty good one, too. To our island, so I can attack for three, trade for the Archer. Good. That's what we want to happen. Because now we get to play out a 7-7. Seven, seven. Uh, for those of you keeping track at home, the Essence Warden has gained 8 life so far. What was that? Oh my god, Monvuli Acid Moss on my only blue source? <laughs> oh, that's golden. That's funny. Destroy target land, search your library for a forest card, and put it on the battlefield tapped. Oh my. I mean, it's not relevant right now, but very possible it's relevant in the future. Because we have 4C, Tromp the Domains, and a uh, Shaper Parasite of our own. That's pretty funny. Even Augur, sure. So they're going to have to do some chumping this turn which looks like they have plenty of creatures to chump with, but they th then they can use the Avon Augur to uh, return two creatures to my hand. Now would be a good turn to draw some removal. Like that. Two, four, yeah, let's just go to combat. See how they block. Oh, they're just taking it. Oh my gosh, all right. I guess their plan then is really to have used the auger. So let's kill the auger here. 
And now we can just force double chumps for effectively the rest of the game. Wow, I am very surprised they didn't chump with at least like the Utopia mic on there. Crazy. The greed is real. Sure. It's a funny little card here, the Yavamaya Dryad, because you can put it uh, onto the battlefield for your opponent if they don't already have forests to make a 2-1 forest walk creature. But I'd say most of the time that is uh, just a ramp card for yourself. Also, in this scenario, I already have forests. All right, so Pyrohemia is going to be a win. Tromp the Domains is a win. Um, or use Ghost Fire, so that's not a win. Forest, not a win. I don't think there's a reason to attack with the Meyer Boa yet, because they, they would just throw the Shaper Servant, uh, Parasite on it. Since the Shaper Parasite's not going to be used on any of these creatures over here anyways. All right, as predicted, double chump. It does make my phantom worm a little bit smaller. What is this? Target creature gets plus two, minus one until end of turn. Okay, so can't regenerate my my boar through that. Opponent's still on double chump duty though. Psychotrope Thalid, sure. They're at four. And another creature? Another morph. They're at five. Okay. That Essence Warden has gained a lot of life. Well, that's what happens when it enters the battlefield on turn one. Hey, we did it. We did it! Trample! Trample! Shake my hand! 16 trample damage. <laughs> Shake my hand! Scoop to me! Alright. Blue-green stuff. Let's bring in the old wormy. Let's take out our Vitaspore Thalid. And... Go to game number two, try to salvage a 2-1. Again, I think our deck's pretty good. Hopefully the draws can uh, cooperate with us, but let's go to game two. Okay, game two, round three. Yeah, we're on the draw, and this is probably a keep. Pretty darn slow, but got all three of our colors. Oh no, don't Essence Warden me again. That Essence Warden gained so much life. I'm going to place a search for tomorrow. I'm going to sandbag our island until I actually draw a blue spell that's relevant because we know they're running uh, the Mwan Vuli Acid Moss. Do they have a two drop? They do. Suspend Veiling Oddity. So that's going to make all creatures unblockable. Um... When that finally comes off suspend. We add red here because we have Blood Knight in our deck. Which we didn't draw. So let's cast this, get a mountain. They get to ramp, I get to ramp, everybody gets to ramp. And the big play for turn four is, or I guess turn three is, Avon Auger. Harmonize. Okay, that's pretty darn good. I'm not a big fan of that. So, like, obviously tapping out for Bone Splitter Sliver uses my mana most efficiently, but the thing is, it's a 4-2, right? 
any creature, or effectively any creature they play this turn can block it and trade away. So I think the game plan here is to actually play the Wormwood, which I can make unblockable by Forest Walk next turn, and then play the Bone Splitter in addition to that. There's their Essence Warden. And a pass, okay. I think I offer the trade here though, right? No, no I don't, never mind. I've chopped the Domain in my hand, what am I talking about? We just want to push as much damage as we can here. They have five cards in hand and the only thing they did was play the uh, Essence Warden, so. Not going to be surprised if we see a counter here, if they just flash in their Scrib Sprites. Convoke? Oh no, they have Sprout Swarm! Oh no! They have Sprout Swarm with Essence Warden! <laughs> oh god! So, Sprout Swarm. Green 1, Convoke, Buyback 3, Poop out a 1-1 one, one Sapling. That card gets stupid good, stupid fast. Oh boy. This is... Oh! We did it! Oh my god. Oh my god, do you realize how insane that is here? <laughs> uh, it's actually better for me to play this and just wipe the board even though it kills my Wormwood Dried because then I get to attack for t four. Oh, sweet Jesus, sweet Jesus savior. It feels so good to draw like a luck sack. Die. Oh my God, the perfect draw. The perfect draw. And this makes sense. So why they're casting the Sprout Swarm here, and I'll let you see the actual card now. Green one, instant, convoke, buyback three, create a one one. The, the reason they're casting this out is for the one life from the Essence Warden that they get. But wow. Wowie, 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 wow. That's all I can say. Wowie, 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 wow. Living the dream. The absolute dream. We completely shut down Sprout Swarm with Primarohemia. Okay, Morph. That could be their Shaper Parasite. We know they have it in their deck. <laughs> Take two. I think we go ahead and ping for one at end of turn. Now remember, I don't want to kill all creatures because if I do that, then I end up needing to uh, to sacrifice my pyrohemia. So. We just, I mean, I guess I'm going to offer the trade, since they have a Veiling Oddity. We'll see how they want to do this. Could also just pass and play the Blood Knight, but I think I like doing this. I don't think we saw any other morphs from them, did we? Maybe one other. Sure. Not sure if that's useful for them. Ah, it was an aquamorph entity. All right, I guess I got punished there. So it's Pyrohemia wants to kill the Sapperling. Then play the Blood Knight. This is actually going to be a pretty close game. Um, well, considering the position right now. They can't actually attack with the oddity, though. No! Acid Moss! Why you got to do that to me? But 
Like I said, that's the reason why we didn't play out our island. The problem is they killed one of my red sources, so now I can only activate Pyrohemia three times. That was a really good draw, so I can go like this. I can embrace their oddity. Parahemia for one. Give their creature minus two toughness and attack in. They have Sprout Swarm and two unknowns in their hand currently. All right, Avon Augur is fine. And the turn. Pyrohemia for one. Go to combat. Attack for two. Alright, they're just going to take it. Great. Then we're just going to pass. And there's going to be a some point where I can tromp the domains and then... Uh, And then uh, Pyrohemia for like two, and that might kill them. Oh, did I just mess up? I just messed up. I shouldn't have killed their token. By killing their token, I made it so Pyrohemia dies now. I guess they could have just bounced their... Uh, Bounce their 1-1 token as well. Oh, wait, maybe they think it's... Maybe they think it's only me. I think they thought that if I don't control a creature, I have to sacrifice the Pyrohemia, but... No, it's just any creature on the battlefield. Oh, that's really good for us. And it's at the beginning of the end step, so I actually can activate it twice here to try to kill their morph. Okay, I think we got really lucky there. Well, that is technically lethal if this resolves, so... Let's try to ghost fire them for three. And then activate Pyrohemia for two. Wow! I got extremely lucky this game. I'm not going to pretend I didn't. But I guess it makes up for uh, <laughs> the extreme unluckiness we got in the first round where I only drew... Well, I started with two lands in my opening hand and didn't draw one for the next four turns. All right, sweet little deck there. Hopefully you guys, uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this look at uh, Time Spiral Block Draft. Um, you got to see the power of Pyrohemia. You didn't get to see the power of the Sprout Storm so much, even though our last opponent there did have it. But it's a fun one. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. And don't forget to check out all the other content here on the MTGO Traders channel or check out my Twitch stream at twitch.tv slash pneumothenummy. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Thank you for watching the video. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to smash that like button. Subscribe to the channel for more awesome MTG content just like this. And make sure to tap the bell icon to be notified whenever a video is made live. If you want to keep watching content, here are two more videos for you. This video and many others are sponsored by MTGO Traders and Cape Fear Games. Buy and sell digital singles to build your online collection today with MTGO Traders, and get your paper singles, accessories, and much more from Cape Fear Games. Whatever your magic needs, both places have you covered.